cars that go around a curve and a road benefit from friction because to take that turn requires there to be a centripetal force, some force which causes the car to execute circular motion. Even when the car is moving at constant speed, an acceleration is required in order to have that velocity vector change in direction. In this problem, we're going to study what happens to a car of mass 1,500 kilograms, which takes a turn whose radius of curvature is 35 meters. If the tires in the road have a coefficient of static friction of about 0.35 between them, we can ask what is the maximum speed at which the car can take the turn without skidding. If you recall, 0.35 for the coefficient of static friction would be something like the case when the road is rather wet. If we consider what are all the forces acting on the car, there are two forces acting in the vertical direction. There's gravity pulling the car down toward the road, and there's the normal force, which is the road pushing back up on the car. Pointing perpendicular to these, but and back toward the center of the curve of the, the road, is the static force of friction. In other words, if the car would like to slide, it likes to slide outward in radius, and what prevents that sliding process is the static friction force. The most logical coordinate system for this problem will be one in which the uh, one of the coordinates follows some of these forces and the other follows the, uh, the rest. So we'll put the y direction in the vertical and the x direction pointing back toward the center of the radius of curvature from where the car is. In this case, when we write down Newton's laws in the x direction, that is in the direction in back toward the center of the radius of curvature, we know that the sum of all the forces in the x direction has to equal the mass times the centripetal acceleration. And the centripetal acceleration is equal to v squared over r. So we know that the sum of forces has to equal mv squared over r. Now we just simply, simply have to put in what are all the forces in the x direction. There is only one force in the x direction, and that's the status for, static force of friction. So we can write that Fs equals mv squared over r. The static force of friction is something that gets larger and larger de depending on how hard I push in the direction of, of the motion I'm trying to force here. But I know that the static force of friction can be no larger than mu s times the normal force, and in this case the normal force equals just mg. So in terms of how hard I can push in the radial direction without slipping, I know that I can't go any harder than mu s times mg because that's the point where the static force of friction uh, loses out and the car starts sliding. So I have an inequality now. I have mu s times mg is greater than or equal to mv squared over r. If I cancel the mass on both sides of this equation, I have that v squared is less than or equal to mu s times r times g. This says that the velocity has to be less than some maximum, and that maximum can be bigger if I have a bigger radius of, of the turn, which makes sense. If I try to take a really tight turn, I'm more likely to slip. And it can be a bigger speed at which I can take the turn if this coefficient of friction was larger. And that also makes sense because the coefficient of friction is larger when, I, for example, I have a dry road and my tires grip the road really well as compared to when the wet road is wet and this coefficient of friction is smaller. So the maximum speed is the square root of mu s times r times g. For the particular problem we have here, with mu s equals 0.3 and r is 35 meters and g is 9.8 meters per second squared, the maximum speed turns out to be about 13.1 meters per second. This is almost about 30 miles per hour. Of course, we know in many cases we've seen cars and motorcycles take turns at much higher speeds, and that's because that we've used a, a rather worst case scenario when the static force of friction is only 0.35 and we had a rather small radius of curvature of 35 meters.